Hey guys, I'm Rachel. So I'm coming to you with my intro vlog style to the second part of the brushes video. Uh, it was not my intention to do this in two parts, but as I was editing, I felt like it was too long. And since this video has been so requested on my channel, I want you guys to absorb the information. So this is all about the eye brushes. So um, enjoy and I'll see you in my next tutorial soon. So that was the face category and these are the brushes that I reached for. So now we're going into eye brushes and I have all these brushes here to speak of. Eye brushes, okay? The eyes are just a little bit more complicated. And in makeup, everything takes time and takes practice. The more you practice, the better you're going to get at it. The better you're going to get at it, the more you're going to see which tools you prefer. Now, speaking of that, now let's go into eyes. These are blending brushes and they do the same thing but as you can see they're shaped totally different i have a slightly hooded eyes but i feel like because of that i like my my first shade which is called the transition shade uh eyeshadows are done in gradients so you start from lightest to darkest and the darker you go the smaller your brush is going to get because you want it to be intense so i hope that made sense to you so because of my eye shape, I like my colors to be more blown out. So I like reaching for bigger blending brushes. Blending brushes come in different sizes. So this one I have, I have my Morphe M441 and Morphe M405 blending brush. This one, they're shaped totally different. And one, one is more dome shape and one is just, just, the bristles are just long. And this one is a natural hair brush and this one is a synthetic hair brush. This is what we're going to use to apply your first transition color because what it's going to do is it's going to buff out and blow out the first color that you place on because when you're placing your transition color you do not want it to be very pigmented and these brushes are going to allow you to achieve that look it's basically the color you place before you went going with any other color to help create a gradient and to blend to make other colors blend easier over top if that makes sense if you're lost try to keep up watch this video more than once i'm not even sure if i'm explaining it right but i hope that i am <coughs> So these brushes are totally different in the shape, but they basically do the same thing. That's what I'm saying. Practice makes perfect. You're gonna have to see which brush works best for your preference. Makeup is what? 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 Personality. 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 Again, it's the Morphe M441 and the M504 brush. These are both blending brushes used to apply your first transition color. Okay. After you apply your transition color, you want to go in and define your crease. And for that, you need a brush that's not as fluffy or long as those brushes. Back to density. The shorter the bristles are, the more it's going to pack on, but you're also going to be able to blend a little bit. Now I have the Morphe M433 brush and the Morphe M330 brush. These are both crease brushes and they're shaped differently, but they perform. They basically give you what you're going for. This is it's a flatter brush, as you can see. It's a flatter brush and this one is a rounder brush now this is designed in a way to get directly in your crease but still allow you to blend into the transition color as well as this one which is longer but it comes to a peak so it's gonna focus in your crease and the shorter bristles on the side is gonna help blend out the color that you applied in your crease and as you can see they are shaped differently they're they're denser because they're gonna pack the color on more so that you have you're able to create the gradient, the transition that you're looking for from lightest to darkest. Try to keep up. So for that, I like my Morphe M443 and my Morphe M330 brush. These are called crease blending brushes. Moving on. So after you apply your crease color, your transition color, you want to apply a lid color. And these are all lid color brushes. They are different sizes, which means they're going to perform differently depends on the look that you're going for this is a smaller brush that I like using when I'm doing cut creases or when I want to create a cut crease with just my shadow when I want something a little more defined because you see how small it is it's not gonna allow me to blend anything it's just gonna put um, let the pigment stay exactly where I placed it and that's the brush that I will go for whenever I want to do that this is a very small shadow brush and next one is the coastal sense eyeshadow brush and as you can see compared to this one as you can see compared to this one it's bigger and this one's a coastal scent brush as well it's from the set that i said i was a long time ago this one gives me a little more of a blending ability because the bristles are longer and it's fluffier but it's still gonna pack the color on for me so i reach for the brush and i probably want a little blending ability to happen i don't want anything too harsh but i still don't want it too diffuse so this is gonna pack 
shadow on for me this one this one is a more pricier brush this one is a pricier brush and it's it's a Chanel brush but I love this brush so much for shadows to apply glitters and things like like um not glitter sorry um I love this brush to apply um, shimmer eyeshadows and stuff for some reason it, it really um, applies it nicely on my eyes and as you can see it's bigger and it's a little bit more fluffy so it helps me to blend the color when I really want to create this effortless looking eyeshadow look where I don't want anything to define but I still want to see some sort of gradient with my colors this is gonna do that for me so it applies the color and it allows me to blend these are all eyeshadow brushes used for different times in your makeup routine depends on the look that you're going for and like I said even though they're there I use them for shadows doesn't mean you can't use it for something else because this can make good for underneath your eye as well you can make good to deepen your crease as well if you feel like that's the look you're going for this could pack color really nice on your outer corner or even in your bottom lashes you can use these brushes for multiple reasons you don't need all three but I would recommend you have a big one and a small one so next category pencil brushes this is sort of like a pencil brush but it is let me see how to explain this for you it has more of it's it's softer it's longer it's not as dense as these two so it's gonna allow you to blend I use this when I want to get really defined in my crease if I'm doing a cut crease and when I really want to buff my bottom lashes like this I'm gonna pack the color on and I'm gonna I'm gonna buff it off with this it's gonna give me that blown out look that I want these ones don't give me the blendability as this one they are more dense and very precise so there are both pencil brushes and as you can see they're shaped totally differently. They're shaped totally different. So I like to use this to get very precise as well. So if I want to pack color, if I want to apply some highlights, maybe my nose contour, my cupid's bow, when I want to get really precise, I reach for pencil brushes like this. This one is um this one is a BH cosmetics pencil brush. This one is a crown C528 brush, and this one is the Morphe. Ah, oh my god, I can't remember this one. I, I, like I said, I will list it in the bottom bar. But they're all pencil brushes that do different things. And I feel like pencil brushes are necessities in your kit. All the brushes that I mentioned, they are a necessity in building your kit. Okay, moving on. Here I have, we call these flat definer brushes. I have a Morphe Y21. And this one is one of my Coastal Sand brushes from years ago. They are totally different, but they perform almost the same. This one is shorter and denser. This one allows more um, more movement. So this is, um, this is gonna allow me to pack the color and still sort of blend it out. Whereas this one is just gonna allow me to pack the color. And this is what I love. I love using this brush to pack color underneath my eyes first. And then I'm gonna go in with one of the pencil brushes that I mentioned and just sort of buff it out, blow it out to create a softer, more diffuse bottom, um, bottom lash. So these are called defined flat definer brushes and they are necessities as well. So now here we have eyeliner brushes. I have a Bidelium tools. I have one from Colourpop and another one from Morphe. They're all different and they can still allow you to achieve the same thing. This one, it's smaller. So this is perfect for applying a wing liner if you was to use it with a gel. It's also good for your brows if you was using pomades and things like that because it's smaller and it's gonna get more precise with where you wanna place the product. This one, you can use for your brows as well or you can also use it like to apply um, pack color to your bottom lashes as well I, I would not use this one for a wing liner because it's thicker it's not as flat although you can mold it to be how you want it to be and this one again is an eyeliner brush but it's more with a point this is perfect for creating wing liners as well they work really nice with gel products when you want to be, get precise maybe in your waterline to create wings and things like that so these are the three I reach for the most when I want to do my brows or a wing I have a Morphe M167. This is a synthetic brush and it's I love using this brush when I want to use glitter and pigments and things like that. When you want to apply glitter and pigments, you need to reach for a synthetic brush. It's not going to hold on to the product. It's going to pack the product as opposed to a natural brush that's going to hold on to a lot of the product. You need something that's synthetic. You would not get the same effect with a pigment on a natural hairbrush. So I like using this synthetic brush to pack pigments and glitters and things like that and this is a morphe m421 brush and it's a concealer brush but you can also use this to pack pigment on that it's synthetic and you can also use this to cover your brows if that's what you're into you can also use it to neaten up if you probably got crazy with your lip lines the spot conceal anywhere you have concealers or any blemishes and things like that so this one is like for eyeshadow this one is for concealer but you can still use this one as a concealer brush as well because it's synthetic you understand so 
these are the brushes that I love for pigments. I don't necessarily use this one for concealer too much because I don't like. I feel like I, I when when I want to create certain looks, it's just too big for me. I like smaller brushes. I'm gonna show you what I use to cut to create uh, cut creases and um, for my concealers. This is what I like to use for my concealers to create cut creases. I like smaller brushes. These are marketed as, marketed as lip brushes. They are. I do use them for my lip as well, but I also like to use them to create cut creases. I mold them, I flatten them out, and I like to, it's just so small, so it's gonna help me to just cut the crease really, really well, and that's what I love. And they are lip brushes. I bought these off Amazon, some indie brand that I can't, um, I probably will try to find it and link it in the bottom bar. And this one is a Morphe E19. Like I said, it's a lip brush, but I like using it for concealers as well because it's synthetic and I like the, um, it helps me to apply my, to create, it helps me to create a sharper cut crease. So I love these brushes. And last but not least, you need a spoolie. And these days, if you're someone who's into applying your brows with pencils, these days all brands, almost all brands, mix um, a spoolie at the end of the pencil. This is a Colourpop spoolie that I have here and I do have others. They're different. It depends on, you know, the look that I'm going for, like I said. It's personal. But you need a spoolie. You need to comb through your brows so your brow hair and your brow products can be distributed evenly and you don't, you're not left with um, chunks of color here and there. You need a spoolie in your makeup kit. That's basically it for the brushes I feel are a necessity when you want to achieve a flawless makeup look. I just thought I'd just mention this extra two. This is a flat foundation brush and this is like a, a dense like concealer brush. I, I, this is like a multi-use brush for me. You can use this to blend out your concealer over your eyes when you define your brows. You can use it to blend out your concealer on different areas of your face or any cream product that you use and you want to get really precise with it because it's so dense it's going to help to to blend out any cream and get very specific with, with certain products on your face and this one is a flat um, foundation brush and I like to use this like if you have maybe products in pots that you just don't want to dip into you can use this to apply it on your face you can use it to apply primers you can use it to apply foundation and then blend it out you can use it to apply a face mask like it's very multi-use and I just thought I would mention that in case anyone out there looking and probably have a brush in that i wouldn't use this to apply foundation because it's not going to give me the look that i want so you can apply your foundation with it and then go in and buff it out or whatever the case may be well i feel like this this brush comes in very handy at some point in your makeup routine so yes guys so that's it that's it on brushes i hope i explained this well that you know it probably helps somebody out there because like i know a couple of my subscribers wanted to see this so if you have any any questions at all in case i wasn't explicit enough leave them in the description box dm me whatever i will help you in any way that i can in building a brush a brush um brush set I'm about to edit this now and see how much i ramble and if i got the point across i hope that i did and i hope it's going to be helpful for those of you all who really wanted this and who have um and those of you all who have confusion when it comes to makeup brushes that it would have helped simplify that for you guys so as time continues when you you probably have your basics in your eye in your brush collection you can keep adding more to it if that's your preference but these are the basic brushes that i feel like everyone needs beginner friendly for your make makeup brush collection and as time goes on you can just add more to it experiment with different brands and things like that different size brushes types brushes things like that so thank you so so much for watching hi if you're new here my name is rachel um welcome to the crazy family welcome to the family of the family <laughs> so all the brushes i mentioned will be in the description box so you can always refer to it in case you missed it in case you missed it during the tutorial, during the video, or in case I probably did not remember to mention it, the type of brush in the video, I will list it. I will list it in the description box. All the links to my social media will be in my description box as well. How to book me, because I am a nail tech and a makeup artist out here in Brooklyn. Follow me on my social media platforms. See my work. Okay? Like, comment, share the video. Help me to grow here on this platform and that is how I would grow. Would you liking, commenting and sharing? Thumbs in up the video if you want me to continue this year on YouTube. I know it's a lot to ask, but it's required. YouTube, that's the only way YouTube would know, um, okay, well, this is this, this is being watched, so let me recommend it so other people can look at it. You know what I mean? So thank you so much for the support so far. Um, I will also link other videos in my iPod. This is that I would see on top. And I would also leave one on my end screen so you can click that to watch another video after you're done with this. This is also going to help me to grow here on YouTube. So thank you so much for the support. Let's continue to touch the world one face at a time. And I'll see you in my next, next video, next tutorial, next week. <laughs> Bye, guys.